All right, so this is a question that we had from Sunday morning from February 28th, and it has to do with uh, social media. I make comments about social media and the dangers of social media, especially with the obsession on uh, selfies and kind of a self-absorbed culture, and all of us run the risk of this, of wanting the world to revolve around ourselves, and social media becomes the primary expression of this. I think we see this kind of self-propagation and the world revolves around me in the political arena, in the entertainment arena, in the sports arena. It's everywhere around us. We see it in our homes. And so this question comes from someone talking about the issue of social media and the use of social media in terms of theological debate. So you have someone will post something on social media and it's something we may not agree with theologically or socially or something like that. And we have a maybe even a really good biblical basis for that. Uh, how should we approach them? Uh, if, if it's uh, an individual we feel like they're wrong and we blast them, is that too judgmental? Uh, if we ignore it, is that being silent in the face of something we view would be either immoral or theologically in error? And how should we handle that? And I struggle with this as well. I run across, I have uh, many uh, of my friends from Facebook are not evangelical believers. They, they have come from a variety of backgrounds, from agnostic to full-blown atheist to individuals who are uh, maybe from a more liturgical environment. Um, all, all kinds of backgrounds. Many of them are evangelical believers, and we probably share a lot of very common theological worldviews. So how, how do we are to handle this? And so I have one individual in particular that will post regularly things that uh, basically assault any notion of an absolute truth or value while claiming to be a Christian. And I will occasionally post a very gentle counterexample to the idea, but I try to be very careful with this because of uh, several things. First of all is that a gentle answer turns away wrath, and I think we should follow that approach. So it's fine to just say, hey, I'm just curious if you thought about this from this perspective. And if they come back and blast you, just say, oh, I'm sorry, I was just, you know, just wanting to dialogue about it, that kind of thing. I, kind of, I think a gentle response is always our best. It's really hard to hear when there's more heat than light, and so I would say gentleness is always our best. We can say the exact same thing with gentleness, and so I'd say we always err on the side of gentleness, number one. Number two is that um, individuals who are not part of our immediate uh, covenant of faith, our church, uh, maybe even our immediate family or something like that, we have a different relationship with those individuals anyway. And so sometimes I'll hear a statement about, well, John the Baptist confronted Herod over the uh, over his you know relationship with this person who was his brother's wife. Shouldn't we have that kind of thing? Well, I would say that John the Baptist is a prophet for the Jewish people, appointed by God, has a divine right to speak into the lives of kings in that relationship. I would say it's a little different for us when we have a person we graduated high school with 20 years ago to somehow blast them as if there's some covenant relationship between us and them. We're not John the Baptist to, king, uh, to a king, a Jewish person, or a person claiming to be a Jewish king. Um, that's a radically different relationship. Uh, we are within the church called for that, but even on that, I don't know that I would blast them in social media. That sounds more like an email on Facebook than it sounds like a post on their Facebook page. Uh, so even on that, gentleness and confidentiality, uh, those kinds of things are, are the right approach. First Peter says that we should always be ready to give a defense of the hope that is within us. I think that's really the key here, of the hope that is within us, not the condemnation that is within us. And so I, would, I think it's fine to post on social media. If you feel like you can create a dialogue where individuals will talk and engage and maybe even contemplate some of these things. I think it's great to refer them to maybe good videos on places like YouTube or uh, Robbie Zacharias or something like that where you can go, hey, I saw this really great clip about this topic. Uh, it might add some discussion here. Things like that that are encouraging and just basically speaking into the conversation where it sounds like you're interested in a dialogue. All of those things are right and good. I think I would err on the side of gentleness and then also consider the relationship you have with the person. If it's a covenant relationship, that's one thing. If it's not a covenant relationship, then even more so gentleness and openness and grace has to dominate all that we do and say. And I think that's true of all encounters that have to do with evangelism, whether it's a conversation at a uh, restaurant or a conversation in our front yard with our neighbor or at the sports field or at school or something like that. Gentleness, grace, but with a 
the press of hope, the hope that is within us. And so I think that's uh, the key to these things. And so that's a really good question. It's constantly uh, before us these days. So good question. We'll see you guys this Sunday.